Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chris Pike. My friends call me Big C. I'm back in action today. We're in HitFilm Express, a free video editor. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to add text, animate text inside HitFilm Express for free using free software, free functions. And it's going to look a lot like what Mr. Beast does in his videos. So, yeah. How does Mr. Beast get all that production value? Well, I'm going to show you. And again, because we're freedom, we're teaching you how to do this using free tools. So if you're new to YouTube or you're thinking about getting started on YouTube and you're a little worried about it being too difficult, don't worry. We got you. I'll show you how to do it. Let's go ahead and take a look here in the trimmer. I have a video of Mr. Beast and I'm going to show you his great hide and seek video or whatever the heck it's called, like a million dollar hide and seek thing. And let's see what his text looks like. I'm going to hit play and watch. All right, so he's got some crazy stuff going on where he's, where if we go to about the three second mark, I'm going to just zoom forward. You're going to see that he's got some text that just sort of pops in. All right, let's just go ahead and stop it. There we go. Where is it? Three seconds or so? Okay, so right here, right at the end of this, I'm just hitting the, this is just the next frame. So right here, you're going to see it come in to pop. It's going to pop in. There it is. That is the first frame. So there's the first frame, and you'll see that it's moving in. So it's scaling. It's increasing in size. Next frame, it's a little bigger with a little bit of blur on the side. And then it gets a little bigger, but it's in complete focus. I'm at the wrong button there. Let's just go back to 100%. But it's in complete focus. And then as I move forward, it then starts to decrease in size. So let's just go scale the fit because that's not quite right. So again, let's take one more look at it. And then we're going to re we're going to replicate it very, very close using, again, free software. So it shoots in and then it retracts a little bit. This is basically an elastic type effect. It's called an overshoot, really, uh, in the animation world. So this is basic elasticity basic overshoot how did you do it eh, it's very very easy to do and i'm going to show you how to do it and show you that i know what i'm talking about let's go ahead and just make it a simple example with an ocean background so that it's very visible again this is just to teach, to teach the technique i'm going to click on play bang it shoots in it stops okay it does not have the blur on this one but don't worry about that i can show you how to do that too okay here we go i'm going to delete this and we're going to start from scratch so i'm going to go ahead and I've just got some, again, some basic footage here. The first step, you want to go to your viewer, go up to the top here, and you're going to want to left click on this A. It looks like an A. <laughs> it is an A, but it's a text tool. I'm going to left click on the text tool, and then I'm going to left click on the canvas, and I'm going to write big C is here, something silly like that. It doesn't really matter what it says, okay? Perfect. The next step, I'm going to get this selection tool, and then I'm just going to eyeball it, and I'm going to center it. So I went and grabbed the text, the, the little um, selection tool, and I moved it around. So basically, we've got this now. We've got this. It just shoots in, and it does nothing. All right, no biggie. Now, here's something I want to show you, and it's very interesting. When you're working with animations inside HitFilm Express, it doesn't have what we call magnets or snapping. So you can't really, like, if I'm sliding this around, like, in Premiere Pro, you could hold down the shift key and then you'll know that it's basically when I move it forward, it will snap at the beginning, but this one doesn't. So in order to get it right, you got to click on this next frame button or this previous frame and then make sure the frame that you've got selected is the first one where the text is showing. If you don't do that, it can get a little messy. So if you're not sure, just hit the previous frame, next frame. There it is. That's the first frame. So we're on our way. Okay, the next step is I'm going to go over here to the text window. Now, there is a good chance that you don't have that showing, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you're on media, which you probably are, and this panel isn't uh, expanded, you want to go ahead and select this line here and expand the panel until you see the text option. So there's the text window. I'm going to left-click on it. Presto. Okay, good stuff. The first thing I want to get you to do is I want you to go ahead and slide down to the bottom and then you're gonna see that right now you're on left alignment go ahead and click center alignment it's gonna shoot it off to the left there and make it a little weird but when we ex when we do our animations we want the animation to come from the center instead of from the left side so just go ahead and click on center alignment and then go back and make sure you've got the selection tool and then just move it into the center here somewhere something like that okay so there we go alright cool 
Now, let's go back up to the top and let's go through this. Now, when you're in the text in the text window here, you're going to see a few things. The first one is you're going to probably, in all likelihood, have Arial as your default selection. This is the default text that they use. And yeah, you're going to be at Arial and it's going to be at 48 in, in all likelihood. I think that's their original starting stuff. And there will be no outline on it. So it'll look something like this. Okay, let's go ahead and basically go through how to change the font, change the size, and all that good stuff, and add a uh, stroke to it like we just did here. So the first step, I've gone from Arial, and this is your default one. I'm going to go ahead and select the Noteworthy, and this is a free, oh, I went a little too far. I'm going to select the Noteworthy font, and where do you hide? There you is. All right, so we've selected Noteworthy, and if you look at it, it's got a little bit more roundedness to it rather than Arial, which is kind of straight up and down. Okay, the second step is I'm going to go ahead and type here, instead of 48, I'm going to type 160. This is the size that I want. And also, if I hover over top of it, I can increase, decrease the size as I see fit. So I'm going to go with something like 160, presto. There we go. So we switched the font. We switched the styles. We've increased it to 160. Now we're going to add an outline. If you're a Photoshop user, you usually hear, or, an, or a Premiere Pro After Effects user, it's usually called Stroke, but they call it Outline. We're going to left click on Outline, and it's going to apply the default stroke to it, which is red and four, four pixels. It's not correct for what we're trying to do. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to left click on this red square, and I'm going to go ahead and select black. So right about there, I'm going to select a black color. And then I'm going to left click on OK. And the stroke is now going to turn black. Beauty. Also, this is a very thin outline or a very thin stroke where if we're looking at what Mr. Beast does, he's got a little bit more stroke there. So I'm going to go from 4. I'm going to increase this up to somewhere close to... Let's go closer to 10. Okay, let's go to... What do you think? Want to go there? Let's go to 10, okay? Now, you're looking at what he's got, what we've got. We're very similar, but we're not quite there. Our font is a little different than his. And that's deliberate. A, he uses his own unique font, I'm sure. And B, we don't want to exactly copy him. We just want to learn the technique. If you want to change the font, go nuts, change the font. So we've added an outline or a stroke. You will notice that it's on overfill. That's the one we want. We've changed the size. We've changed the font to noteworthy. We are on our way. We've also gone ahead and adjusted it so that it's center aligned versus left aligned. Okay, guys. Let's keep rolling. The next step is I'm going to go over here to the controls panel and I'm going to go ahead and do that overshoot animation just like he did here. And we're going to start with the overshoot, which is the basically the bounce in. The, the text is going to bounce in and out. And the way you do that is you do what's called a scale. So we're going to go ahead and make a scale animation. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to left click on this little circle by scale. And when you do that, you're going to see it goes red here. And this allows us to go ahead and change the scale. So when we start, you'll notice in this video here on the left side, it started like I showed you. It started small, right? And it grew in size and then it snapped back just like that. So let's go ahead and do that in our example. So I've left click on scale. It's red. I'm going to start it at about 676%. So it's small. Okay, again, making sure that this playhead is on the very first frame of your text. You don't want to start it over here, over there. It'll make a mess of things. So we're on the first one. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten frames, just to really sell it. And when I go forward ten frames, I'm going to go from 76 to about 120. Let's go to 126. Let's go to 124, or something like that. 125%. Okay, so this is bigger than we want it to be. So what we've got smaller, and then at this 10th frame, it's bigger. And then I'm going to move forward another 10 more frames, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if you're not sure how I'm doing it, it's next frame and previous frame. We just move one frame at a time. And then on this one, I'm going to go back to 100%. So I'm just going to type it in instead of doing it that way. So it's going back to 100%. Now, let's take a look at what we got here. I'm going to go over to the beginning. I'm going to hit this play button. It shoots in and it shoots back. That is an overshoot. That's kind of like what they did here inside with this uh, Mr. Beast video. 
Okay, guys, you should be following along good with me here. And again, you can always just slow this video down and go through it step by step. And leave a comment or question if you're trying to do this and you're struggling with any parts, because I will help you. Personally, I will respond to every comment. Okay, so we've gone ahead and added in an overshoot, kind of like how Mr. Beast does it. But you'll notice one more thing from Mr. Beast. He also has a blur effect. So if we go at the beginning of when that shoots in, right here, next one is the start. You'll see here that there's a bit of a blur on it, right? This is not, uh, the, the center is not blurred and the, you know, the outsides are blurred. So how do we do this? We're now going to go from controls over to effects. And when we go over to effects, you're going to see a whole bunch of things. And this, this Hit Film Express has a lot of great effects. I'm going to click on the one that says blurs because Captain Obvious needs to check in every once in a while. And then I'm going to select the one called blur. How original is that? I know. I'm going to left click on it, and then I'm going to drag and drop it onto the text right there. Boom. Now, it starts blurred, and this is not something that we want. So, again, I dragged and drop it. I'm going to go from transform. I'm going to close transform, and I'm going to drop down, and I'm going to go to the effects again under the controls panel. And you're going to see that the red box with a check mark in it for blur is selected. Okay, good. This means we're on our way. What you want to do now, and this is really quite simple, is you want to left click on this radius. Now, when you do that, we're going to go ahead and just adjust the blur and only the blur. So at the beginning, it has a edge blur, but it doesn't have it in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decrease the size of this considerably. So I'm going to go to about, oh boy, this is going really quickly. So I'm just going to slide it up to about, let's go to about two, what do you think? This is, let's go to a, this is going a bit too quickly. So we're gonna to go to a four, okay? So we've selected radius and we've blurred it to four. And this again is on the first one. Now I'm gonna move forward, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna basically drop it down to zero. So this is a very subtle blur and it's not an exact replica of what they've done with, um, for Mr. Beast, but it's similar. So what happens is, you'll see here, if we go really, really tight, you'll see here that when we move up, it's blurred, and as we go in, it shoots, and then it goes fully unblurred, and it's a very subtle effect, but it's kind of, we could probably blur it a little more. Let's just hit play and see what happens. Blurred, in it comes, it shoots back, and it's going through RAM, so it's not exactly perfect. But as you can see here, it starts blurry, and if we really want to, we can maybe blur it a little more. So if I, where's the first one? This is the first frame, so instead of having it at four, we can go like all the way to like, I don't know, seven or eight. This is really blurry. Let's go to six, okay? This is really blurry, because it's not perfect. So we've got a six, and then we move forward. One, two, three, four, five it goes to zero. So there we go, guys. That's how you do it. So there it blurs, it shoots in, and that's it. And now if you want to render it, you just go to, go up here, you go to export to file, and then let's see what we got. It'll just open up, and we'll just call this Mr. Beast Blur. Oops. Blur text. And then you would hit save, and then you just export this bad boy. Just like that. You'll see it's already starting. So guys, I know that was a long-winded explanation, but this is how you add text for free to your videos, similar to what Mr. Beast does, and all of this done for free, using free software, free tools. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching this tutorial. A ton more stuff coming up. Stay tuned. Be back soon.